Are those, are those air conditioners going to be a problem hearing this evening? Crank the volume up, huh? Okay. A couple, couple things. One, uh, Mike would like to get this budget policy formulation sheet back in as soon as you could, please. So whoever hasn't finished theirs and uh, are working on them, please get them back into Mike. The other thing before we start the meeting is, uh, as we begin this meeting this evening, I'd like to extend a sincere thanks to everyone who has expressed concern and well wishes over the past two weeks as I, as I have been recovering from angioplasty procedure, which I underwent July 23rd. I was fortunate to have the access to information relating to the heart conditions and ailments prior to suffering any serious medical conditions. And ail conditions, the angioplasty procedure I underwent has become commonplace in our society and according to the American Heart Association, over one million such procedures are performed annually. I truly am grateful for the skills and professionalism of the medical staff at St. Nicholas Hospital, Coolis Heart Center, and St. Joseph's Regional Medical Center. They did an excellent job. I'd like to thank them. And again, thank you for all your cards and, and concerns and prayers. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel great. So we're back on track, and now we'll start the meeting. Notice of the ninth regular meeting of the Common Council. Would you call the roll, please? Excuse. Van Acklin? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wandelman? Here. And Warner? Here. Fifteen present. Quorum's present. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the minutes of the last Common Council meeting be approved and that the same stand is entered on the record. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the previous Council meeting under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of Allegiance, I believe, Alderman Sagali this evening. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marge. Thank you. Okay, Sue, public forum. Okay. Um, Vicki Meyer. Vicki, would you come up to the microphone and give me your name and your home address, please? Vicki Meyer, 3107 North 26th Street. North 26. Okay. Vicki, before you start, can you pull the microphone closer to you? Uh, there you go, maybe that better. And Vicki, you have five minutes. Thank you, Mayor, Council. My name is Vicki Meyer. I live in District 7, and I've come here tonight to express my views on the possible use of Sheridan Park as a site for the new police station. I've been following this issue very closely, and I feel there are many people like me who are opposed to using Sheridan Park. There are many questions that need to be answered. Who told Kimmy and Associates Sheridan Park was available as a site? When did we start building in our parks? Kimmy and Associates picked Sheridan Park as their number one site, but they, were never, they never evaluated the 23rd Street site. All the other surveys I've heard of have picked the 23rd Street site. And why did the city negotiate with the county for so long on the 23rd Street site and then abruptly walk away? You said we needed four acres, but the Sheridan Park has only two. I feel building in any of our city parks is wrong. You've been entrusted by us, the people of Sheboygan, to protect our parks, not destroy them. I was told by the Sheboygan Historical Society that they wanted to build South High School in Fountain Park. 
Now just think what a mistake that would have been. I've heard people say no one uses the park. Well, you can say that about a number of parks in our city. And I feel if we put more play equipment and fryers in these parks, they would get more use. I found out that next to Madison, Sheboygan has the most parks in any city of Wisconsin. We want tourists to come to Sheboygan, so why aren't we making our parks an attraction for the tourists? I've read we will save money by building in Sheridan Park, but what is the value that we put on our parks? I'm all for saving money, but to destroy our parks is just wrong. Once Sheridan Park is gone, it's gone. And by calling the police station Sheridan Station, we'll not make the park come back. If 23rd Street site is not an option, go back and look at the other sites that were recommended. Or remodel City Hall and move the other offices out and let the police department have all of City Hall. This is just a suggestion. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Troy Nemus. Troy, can I get your home address, please? My home address is 630 South 13th Street in Sheboygan. South th and you'll have five minutes, sir. Mayor and City Council, I'd like to thank you for the time to speak. As a citizen of Sheboygan for 37 years and a homeowner directly across the street from the park, I think that you people ought to know some of the things that I've seen in my neighborhood. I have seen open air drug sales directly in the park. I have seen gang violence beyond belief of probably anybody here. I've seen there was one situation where eight guys held two guys down and sick pit bulls on them. I personally was a victim of gang violence where every bone in the left side of my face was busted because I confronted some children breaking glass in front of my house. These are individuals who are 15 to 19 years old. I just took out a loan for $4,400 to pay off the rest of the medical bills to get my face straightened back out. I've seen countless things in my neighborhood and I really believe having a police presence in the middle of the city would, is one of the best things for this city. I understand the green space issue. I used to guide in Canada in summers and I am all for green space. But believe you me, when you see the gang violence and the violence one on one, it's, it's unbelievable that it's happening here in Sheboygan. And sometimes I've, I've talked to some of the police officers in this room tonight about the situations in the neighborhood and our police force is doing the best they can. They're doing a great job. I, I, commend, I commend the police officers. In my situation, they responded very quickly. And when I went to the emergency room, they said if I would have taken another hit or two to my head, I would have been dead. These are things I want you guys to remember when you're making this decision. This is a very difficult thing for me to even think about the past and think about some of the violence that's happened to me. I've also stopped, there was an individual who was going to commit suicide in the park and I talked him down from committing suicide and drove him to K1 where he could get help. There was somebody found hanged in the trees within a block of the park. I came home one afternoon from work and the roads were barricaded a block away from the park because there was a hostage situation, a man holding people with guns. This is a dangerous neighborhood and it's something we need to get a handle of. I, I used to think Sheboygan was one of the greatest towns. I still do believe it has the potential to continue to be one of the greatest towns if we stop the problems that are happening in certain neighborhoods. The site is already owned by the city of Sheboygan and right now under tight financial budgets and tight financial times in our country, I think we ought to consider this spot because of the lower cost initially up front. Potentially down the road it may cost more, but as everybody anticipates, our economy will turn around. I just want everybody to really think about centrally locating a police office. 
That way your response times are quicker throughout the entire city. And when you think about, well, you lose 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there, I ask you, how long would it have taken for one or two more punches to my head? Thank you. Logan Beenan. Mr. Beenan, can you give me your home address, please? My address is 1817 South 15th Street. Okay, you Sheboygan. have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Logan Beenan. Am I heard? Yes. Uh, my name is Logan Beenan. I'm born, raised in Sheboygan. I was born in 1933. I attended the public schools for the most part. I recently retired from teaching 28 years at South High. I thank the council and the mayor for giving me the time. I particularly thank my older persons, Bill Wangelman and Bonnie Serta from my part of town. I appreciate their time and energy. I honor their commitment. I speak to support the saving of Sheridan Park. Some say that the park is underused and has been previously said perhaps that could be helped by changes, play apparatus, benches, flower beds, a fountain. How about an occasional small group band concert for us Southsiders to celebrate the park? If the park is ill used, as the previous speaker mentioned, and the neighborhood needs policing, a police station isn't the answer. Those who break the law move to other locales. The problems remain. But to remove the park from its birthplace and it's lost for good. I don't know how the financial figures will shake down when all is done, but after we have made our purchase and can look with pride on our new law enforcement building. And then the pain of cost, and I mean the possible additional cost of preserving Sheridan Park, this green gem. Then the pain of cost rapidly eases and is eventually forgotten. How many remember the additional cost to the city of putting a swimming pool in what is now Central High School, or was Central High. It was the first swimming pool indoor in the state. How many remember the pain of building two brand new high schools at the same time in the late 50s? How many remember more recently the pain of remodeling and adding to North and South High and Farnsworth in the mid 90s? Eventually, the cost, the pain of cost, subsides rapidly and is soon forgotten. The council knows the heritage of the park, one of Sheboygan's oldest. It's a beautiful spot of green, the only break in the concrete and brick, the entire route of Business Drive and 14th Street. It's part of what we should pass on to our grandchildren. This was here from the beginning. <clears throat> Ed Zurich. Mr. Surik, can you give me your home address, okay, please? It's Ed Surik, uh, 2923 uh, North 6th Street, Sheboygan. You have and five minutes. Pardon? You have five minutes, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I guess today I'm representing the, uh, oh, thank you. I would thank the, the mayor and the councilman for listening to me on this, but uh, today I guess I'm representing the Sheboygan Yacht Club as a member and as a uh, employee of City Hall and in some degree, uh, helping or assisting the mayor in, in some comments and being or items that are being passed around throughout the city. Recently, uh, individual or individuals are passed around a card that shows the, uh, the harbor side of the Sheboygan Yacht Club and a picture of its, of its flag, of the American flag being displayed. 
And the card reads, uh, yachts more important than stars and stripes. Yachts more important than country. It says, no patriots here. And within sight of City Hall, call mayor to complain. And apparently what this card is trying to say is that the flag is being displayed erroneously or not being very patriotic. But and it's been an issue, I guess, in the past. But uh, I'd like to read a, some uh, information we received regarding the same thing. And uh, this individual said, I contacted the US Coast Guard and explain your situation. A Coast Guard representative consulted both Chapman's pilot piloting and naval tactical publications uh, number 13, commonly known as NTP 13. <clears throat> and both in publications indicate that the national ensign, ensign, the US flag, is always flown from the place of honor on the gaff. Whether or not the ensign is flying higher than your club's burgee, that's a little flag on top, is not the issue. The real issue is here is that whether the ensign is flying from the place of honor, not the height at which it is flown. Therefore, you are in compliance with both civilian military guidelines on this subject. And the letter is signed by F. James Sensenbrenner, member of Congress. So um, if it has been an issue, I hope it isn't. I, I know the Yacht Club has been trying to address it and communicate that what we are doing is, is proper and within the, the laws and, and within the, the guidelines. So any questions on that issue? We're glad to answer them. Thank you, Ed. Okay. Consent agenda. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that all our O's be accepted and placed on file, all our C's be accepted and adopted, and all resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances be passed. All our O's be accepted and filed, our C's be accepted and adopted. Ordinances and resolution and ordinance and substitute ordinances? No, just ordinances. Just ordinances be put up under passage. Under discussion, that's from 9 1 through 9 23. Alderman Bunny. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to request 9 23 to be having a separate vote, please. Okay. 9 23. Discussion? Just separate vote? Okay. We'll do that first. We'll be voting on 920, oh, Alderman Van Akron, on 923. Uh, 923 came out of solid agreements and it's passed in the by the committee. I want everybody to know that it was passed. It was discussed a lot in the committee. Okay. <coughs> okay. Sue, would you take the roll, please, on 923? Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? No. Serta? Aye. Scroff? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Warner? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. Alderman Warner. Uh, Your Honor, actually there's just one little thing I forgot to do before the consent agenda. Go ahead. If I could. Uh, to the Common Council, it's, uh, a thank you card from Mayor Schramm for his time when he was in the hospital, and I'd just like to read it to you. It says, Dear members of the Common Council, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks for the fruit basket and well wishes you sent me during my recent illness. Your thought thoughtfulness is most appreciated, Mayor Jim. Thank you, Alderman Warner. <coughs> Anything else on a consent agenda? Hearing none, would you call the roll, Sue? Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Perez, Aye. <clears throat> excuse me, Peterson, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Sagali, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Wangaman, Warner, Aye. and Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. <clears throat> 924 can be accepted and placed on file. Alderman Bauman. Just a real quick uh, on 924. That was actually by Alderperson Warner, not Alderperson Bauman. Just a correction. Okay. We have a motion before us in a second. Under discussion, Alderman Renflesh. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess I'm, I'm looking for a reason why we're, we're willing to accept. I understand the history of this gentleman on the commission. He's been doing it for a very long time. It's nothing that I'm questioning him personally or his experience, but um, rather why were we getting to, to yet again allow people to live outside the city of Sheboygan to 
participate on, on communities that are supposed to be allowed for people who live inside. I do understand he does own businesses, uh, but we're very specific about being a resident. Otherwise, I could live in Florida and be on a board up here. I, I, you know, I, I don't like to create um, the beginning of a pattern where people can live just on the outskirts of Sheboygan versus being in here. I want people to live in the city of Sheboygan. I think it's a great place to live, and I hope everyone would agree with me and live in the city of Sheboygan. Okay. Alderman Perez? <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Just to echo uh, part of what Alderman Rinfeis has said, we've dealt with this situation before, and the issue drew from the Common Council quite a bit of debate and uh, concern in the community. I am terribly opposed to changing our municipal code for the convenience and benefit of one person. If we're going to change our code, which is our law that we abide by, we should do that only for the benefit of the entire community. Every time that we change our code, amend our code to benefit for one individual, we hurt our whole community and we damage our credibility and our integrity. And I would hope that this council would stop this nonsense about accommodating individuals. I know Mr. Van Der Creek, he's a great gentleman. Uh, I'm very supportive of everything he's done. I'm appreciative of everything he's done. But if we're going to change the code to keep him on the Water Commission board, I'd like to move from the city too and stay as alderman. Would somebody help me out with that? Because I don't want to pay the exorbitant uh, taxes I've been paying without having to say so in it. So I'd like to move out of the community too. But I'd also like to stay as alderman. So if you guys will help me out with that, I'll help you out with this. Thank you. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just to make it clear to the council, this document is simply the communication that came in. It doesn't do anything. We're filing the communication that the gentleman sent. If you look further on on your agenda, under ordinances <coughs> introduced, there's an ordinance there. It's number 953 that lies over to the next council meeting. So this exactly. one here is just the communication that came in. We're not voting on it tonight. So. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Warner, I realize that. I wanted to have a say-so before that. I don't want to have a say-so after it's a done deal. So I, w I wanted to express my sentiments to the council today. Thank you. And as, a, as I could explain again, Your Honor, the ordinance that changes at the done deal would come in two weeks, not now. This is simply a piece of paper we're filing. Correct. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. All, I don't think you need to roll on this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. 925 through 928 to be referred. 929 by City Plan Commission recommending filing resolution 590405 and RC number 750405 documents relating to the city building its new police station on Sheridan Park and stating that the police station should not be built on Sheridan Park and did not make a recommendation as to where the police station should be built. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would move to accept and file the RO and that the resolution be put upon its passage. It's moved and second to accept and file RO and resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Alderman Bonet, did you? So, okay. <coughs> Alderman Renflesh. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just to clarify, first of all, that the resolution is actually, as stated, to put... Let me read the no, therefore be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Sheboygan hereby determines that it is in the best interest of public safety, taxpayer value, and the future of the City of Sheboygan that the City's new police station be located on the Sheridan Park site. Just to clarify to the public what it is that we're uh, voting on here with I, I A and A. Second of all, I want to talk a little bit about um, a lot of what I've heard on the phone regarding the deal with the county. Uh, first of all, some point of information. When people drive by the North 23rd site, they'll the lot in question is not the full lot between the County Highway Board and Superior Avenue. Much of that is actually owned by Volrath. We're only looking at a small parcel immediately next to the garage. Um, one that is fairly big, but not big enough without having to still negotiate for the use of a driveway that's shared by the county. Um, second of all, the deal asks for 300 and some thousand dollars for land that was once used as a landfill. Uh, I'm a bit shocked that the value the, that's placed, and I know I understand <coughs> that we're experts used, uh, to come up with the uh, appraisal value of that. But what else can it be used for? It's landfill. Um, I, I think it's a way that the county can get rid of unwanted land and the city is, I don't know, willing enough to pay for it. That sounds like a good deal to them, but that's not a good deal to me. 
Um, other comments I've heard recently is regarding growth, that the growth in this community is going to be to the west. Specifically, the Sheboygan Press mentioned that in their editorial. Um, but because the county has been unwilling to work with the city in the past with our annexation issues, any growth to the west will actually be done in Kohler, Sheboygan Falls, and in the towns of Sheboygan and Wilson, not in the city of Sheboygan. They have their own police policing units. Uh, the city's growth will actually be in the heart of the city, our redevelopment areas. Uh, we've invested in that areas, and we really need to protect our investments by being centrally located versus um, being located out to the west that, uh, in, towards the Kohler and Sheboygan Falls. Uh, a lot of questions I hear about is shared services again. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of that from the county and also the Sheboygan Press and the editorial, that um, we shouldn't lose our chance to share services. Uh, my question is, what services will the City of Sheboygan Police Department share with their new neighbor, um, the County Highway Department? Um, salt trucks? What are we sharing there, necessarily? I, I don't fully understand why the services that we share have to be located on, on North 23rd Street. No one has yet told me, and I've asked many members of the Police uh, Department, what services that cannot be shared by locating our department on the grounds of Sheridan Park? I'm not sure what we're missing out opportunities on by having it in Sheridan Park versus in, in North 23rd Street. Um, the county's idea of shared services, the one I hear the most is the most interesting, is that they'll use that 300,000 to build a joint shooting range. The county, the, the county will share the use of that, city, that shooting range, shared services, but the city will pay 100% of it. That doesn't sound like a very good deal to me. It sounds like they're getting to use it and we're paying 100% for it. Uh, how is that a good deal for our city taxpayers? Um, a lot of questions I hear about is 7th and Penn. Why are we so willing to give up an empty lot, parking lot right now that seems to have not much use, that is in the heart of our, all of our new redevelopment? I think there's potentially we can put millions of dollars onto the new tax rolls by keeping it and perhaps selling it to a private invest, investor to do some kind of development on there. Keeping it in a parking lot or giving it to the county, how does that help the city taxpayer. Again, I don't understand. I think the county also needs to realize that the taxpayers in the city are county residents as well. We make up almost half of the county, uh, yet uh, we keep seem to be getting on the raw end of the deal with the county negotiations. Why do one half the county have to pay the other half of the county uh, for use of, of land that, that, that is already half ours? Um, as, re as a resident of the city of Sheboygan, I know a bad deal from when I see one, especially from the county, because we've been seeing them for years. Enough is enough. Um, I need to explain to my constituents in tough budget times why we're willing to expend additional $1 million from the city taxpayers and give it to the county taxpayers. Why are we paying ourselves half? Um, better yet, how is the deal that offered by the county truly a good deal for the taxpayers of Sheboygan? Thank you. All the way Peterson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I agree we need a police station. I think the Sheridan site is a good center location. But I've been looking at an alternate site that I think is equally as central and is affordable, and I'd like the uh, council to hold this decision for a few weeks to give us a chance to explore this other site. I've talked to some business people that will help us raise money to buy this other site. So I, I understand the interest in Sheridan Park. It's a good center location, but I really think that in the long run, we need a park <coughs> more than a police station. That would be my, my, my concern. And I think we can get some private sector support to buy this alternate site, which is, is good a central location, perhaps a better location in, some, in many respects. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Alderman Montague. Oh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I can cite bad ideas for both places. Uh, Sheridan Park is a park. The oldest park, when it's gone, it is gone, as many people have said. The violence and the drugs that are going on there now need to be taken care of now, not when the place is built in 2005 or 2006 or 2007. It is across the street from an elementary school. There's five-year-old to 11-year-olds walking to school there. 15 miles an hour speed limit, five days a week, six hours a day, nine months out of the year. No expansion room. However, 23rd Street, I perhaps agree with Alderman Rindfleisch, not the best deal with the county. I worry about our very prime location parking lot being gone and the county owning that, but they need it.
They do need to park some cars. On the other hand, if I were a rich man fiddler on the roof, if we don't give them some parking now, we as county taxpayers will be paying for a parking structure, they were telling us. Neither site is wonderful, neither site is terrible. I like Alderman Peterson's idea to explore a little further. The county isn't going to sell this to somebody else. There aren't people waiting in the wings to purchase it. Sheridan Park won't disappear. We own it. So let's see what Alderman Peterson, who certainly knows what he's doing, let's see what he has to say. I know we have been trying to get a police station for a long time. But you know we can't build it until 2005 or 2006 or 2007 to begin with. Thank you very much. Okay, Alderman Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> First of all, I think that uh, the site that you're talking is at Penn Avenue there, which would take in Ryan Oil in it. I, I would hate to see what's under the ground by Ryan, Ryan Oil and what that would cost the city to clean up that, that whole parcel of land. But last April, when I stood up in the front there, I said this year and maybe next year are gonna be some tough years for us to make some tough decisions. And any decision that we make, we gotta make sure it's for the best interest of the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan. Sheridan Park was chosen by the architects. City PD, 100% behind it. They're the ones gonna be operating out of it. We have communications from all, or not all, but a lot of the neighborhood there where some of the uh, people are even teachers at Sheridan School, and they are 100% behind it. They're looking forward to it. So if we're gonna make sure that we look out after the city taxpayers' money, tonight is the time to make a giant step forward and say, this is the first one, and we're gonna be looking out for your interests from the rest of the year on, because we're gonna have some big decisions to make yet. So keep in favor of Sheridan Park as our police site. Thank you, Dan. Alderman Wanaman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you all know my love of Sheboygan history. And as I said at the committee meeting, if I thought for one moment that we were destroying a historic site, I would be standing on this desk screaming at the top of my lungs. In and of itself, Sheridan Park would not meet the criteria as a historic site. First of all, it has no historic buildings. Nothing historic happened there. It's old, that's true. If everything old were historic, then I'd be historic too. <laughs> but Sheridan Park, in and of itself, is a piece of land. There were no historic people connected with the park. I had some experience working with the Historical Society on designating historical sites, and the Lottie Cooper site was one of them for which we received the award eventually. And these are the criteria they look at. Is, does it have unique buildings on it? Is there something unique that happened there, such as the Gettysburg Battlefield, of course, is a historic site. Some years ago, they wanted to build a housing development there, and General Eisenhower at the time stepped in and, and put a stop to it, because it was absolutely foolish to destroy this uh, sacred site. Uh, were important people or historic people connected to the site? Uh, was there an Indian burial mound there or any of that? None of that exists. If the park were in its original condition, I'd be fighting tooth and nail to save it. We had a beautiful band shell in the middle. We had, we had a, a lovely fountain. We had winding sidewalks through it. We had flower beds. We had people strolling through it on warm summer nights. That's changed. It's gone. The historic value of the park has been ruined, not by us, but by succeeding, maybe councils, I don't know, but it's all gone. And now it's in basically a, a square block of trees and grass. So the historic value of the park is gone. That's, that's no longer there. And uh, of course, I'm, I'm in favor of building the police station and we need to move ahead with this project. 43 years ago, I had the honor of becoming a new police officer in this city. And 43 years ago, we were talking about building a park or a, a police station. And I'm sure that at that time, somebody said, well, wait, let's take another study. Let's look a little further. Maybe there's another site. There's probably 500 sites in Sheboygan County or in, in the city of Sheboygan. The county has made it sound as though if we don't build on North 23rd Street, we're being uncooperative. And I don't really understand that because we can cooperate with them no matter where we are because the type of things that they want us to cooperate with our pistol range and a joint uh, property and evidence room, these kind of things, that can be done no matter where, where we are. 
we're not being uncooperative. Uh, the question came up, why did we negotiate so long? And then all of a sudden just walk away. That's because we did not know whether or not it was legal. Our city attorney had appealed to the League of Municipalities to determine if there was a legal question here and what uh, would it be illegal for us to build in the park. And in fact, in the municipality magazine today, they have the story of Sheridan Park and the decision that they came to that no, this was not illegal. That uh, there had been no designated use for the park. Uh, we have some parks in Sheboygan that were donated by certain families and it was part of their uh, donation that the park be used for nothing else. And if it were, then it would revert back to the family. That's not the case with Sheridan Park. And it's not really the oldest, it's one of two oldest parks. In fact, those parks stood <coughs> undeveloped for many, many, many years. And they were just referred to as a village square and they were not exactly a village square either. They were just a bunch of trees and brush. And uh, finally, after the Civil War, then it was developed and named after General Sheridan, of course. But uh, I think, in, it's my opinion, that Sheridan Park is not historical. I wouldn't destroy a historical site. In fact, I take it as an insult that anybody infers that I would go ahead and be for any project that would destroy a historic site in the city. Because I don't think there's anybody in this room or maybe in the city has done more to try to save our city's history than I have. So I would not go out and try to destroy a historic site. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I also need to thank everybody who is my constituents and those outside of my district who has called me and shared their, their ideas and gave me some insight. And especially to those, I like to extend a thank you to where we had to agree to disagree. I appreciated that, that they were very pleasant and cordial even when we agreed to, to disagree. I didn't realize doing, taking a look at Sheridan Park would become an issue versus relationship with the county. I think um, if we stay true at hand, we had to look at all of the sites and determine which one was best. Um, if it was just an issue, I'm all for working with the county and sharing services on an in, at each individual, looking at everything on an individual basis. If it was just an issue of, of the county and services, then maybe all the sites should have been county sites. So with all the information given at hand, I still believe that Sheridan is the best site. In addition to Kimmy and Associates, we paid a professional entity to take a look at this. That came in. Um, as far as the speed issue, um, I had walked around the neighborhood and that was addressed. And they said, Bonnie, if you think about it, if the, if the site is built here, and they, let's say they were here and they had to take off, if they're out on dispatch and they're coming up 14th Street, they're picking up momentum. They would probably be going a lot faster. If the, if the police station wasn't here. So they would be going actually slower if they had to leave the site versus picking up momentum coming down 14th or, there, or the other way. As far as expansion, another great idea that I got from a constituent is saying, Bonnie, remind them of the library. Um, because of the library and the way that they have built it, we were able to go up instead of out. And he said, make sure that if they do build it there, that their footings could support if they need to go up. So that's an idea that it's not mine, it was from a constituent. And I've also shared this before, that I was a child who lived in the area. Not once did I feel slighted that I didn't play at Sheridan Park. I shared with you some of the safety concerns we had there, some of the parents had there. There was a lot more trees at that time. There's an obstruction of view versus Sheridan School. You can see the children. It's a fenced in. It's safe. And I wouldn't even consider this if they didn't have the equipment right next door. They have everything there. They have actually the equipment is much better. They have a basketball court there. And as the years, I've, I've talked to Mr. Wongman, I've talked to residents, I've talked to my sister and she's like, you know, people have shared me, there used to be the band shield. There used to be a waiting pool there. There used to be bathroom there. All these things were taken out through the years. And I, my question is why? And I'm just using a common sense approach to this. It could have been because of lack of use. Um, I feel that, and again, we're, we're talking about a police station here. This isn't a car wash. I wouldn't even consider it. it. I think it would be a tremendous asset to the neighborhood, to our community, to be centrally located. Um, I still feel that the cost savings is still the icing on the cake, given all the benefits which it could do to the neighborhood. And, and as far as looking at other sites, I've given this some thought too, and, and I've been told that we've had over 40 years, and I think it's time that we press forward. So I, I'm going to support the Sheridan Park site. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. I've had many citizens call me. And uh, actually, through the last two years, I've had citizens call me about Sheridan Park, asking me, are you going to put it at Sheridan? When are you going to put it at Sheridan? Why don't you just pick Sheridan? And I had one gentleman call me that 
he basically said three sentences that hit the nail on the head. It's a whole lot cheaper, it makes more sense, and just get the lead out and get the job done. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, before I make any comments, I guess I'd like to ask some clarification. I'm a little confused, and I've, I've been a little confused before uh, during city council meetings, and I probably will continue to be. If by voting yes to this resolution, are we approving Sheridan Park? Is that what the, the vote is? By voting yes? Yep. So everybody understands that by voting no, then Sheridan You're Park correct. is off, off the table. I would like to make some comments, Your Honor. Mayor, my fellow alderman, Chief Kirk, the city of Sheboygan residents watching this meeting tonight, I have always been a supporter of the police department. I have many friends in the police department. I acknowledge and realize the importance of building a police station. I know all the little details and all the little facts. However, I will not vote to eliminate Sheridan Park forever. It is easy to be distracted and persuaded to do so when you hear people say, we will save a million dollars. The experts recommended it. It will eliminate crime and drug dealing in the neighborhood. No one uses a park anyway. People can use the playground at the school or Kiwanis Park. To those of you who say we will save close to a million dollars, I say this. You're looking in the wrong place to save a million dollars. What happened to the popular notion of shared services where we are supposed to save thousands of dollars every year, not just once? Eliminating Sheridan Park instead of working together with the, with the county will severely diminish the opportunity and availability of shared services. We have tonight a document from the Transit Commission informing us that the cost of replacing the parking lot the county is interested in in the land swap deal with the 23rd Street location will cost about $750,000. How much, I ask you, is it going to cost us to replace a park two or three times as big for our citizens? It appears that in saving a million dollars, it appears that in saving a million dollars, it's probably gonna end up costing us two to three million. That doesn't make any sense to me. And if we elim eliminate Sheridan Park today, which other park are we quickly going to eliminate tomorrow and justify it. To those of you who say the experts recommended, I say this, the experts job, and I have dealt with many, is to give you an answer based on the data and the facts that they have at specific given time. I am sure the experts did what they were well paid to do. However, don't forget we have in-house experts on our payroll too. According to section 74, five of the municipal code, the management, maintenance, and care of our public facilities is under the supervision of engineering and public works. Mr. Tom Holton is the director. He is against eliminating Sheridan Park. According to section 8667 of the municipal code, the city planning department is also responsible for public facilities. Ms. Paulette Anders is the director. She is against eliminating Sheridan Park. The care and maintenance of our parks and forestry under the supervision, is under the supervision of the superintendent of parks and forestry. Mr. Paul Myers is the superintendent. He is against destroying Sheridan Park. Your Honor, the mayor is the chair of the city plan commission. You are against eliminating Sheridan Park. The city planning commission voted against eliminating Sheridan Park. And I listened to your comments on the, on the radio, which were well spoken. And I ask this of the council, what credibility and value are we going to place on our experts, our employees? To those of you who say it will, it will eliminate crime and drug dealing in the neighborhood, I say this, crime and drug dealing will just find another place to occur if it moves away at all from the neighborhood. To suggest that having a police station in the neighborhood will eliminate drugs and crime is a fallacy. It's a false notion. I personally have had vandalism occur in my house and several things have been stolen right from the front porch. And I live across the police station and the fire station. And if there is such a high crime and drug rate in the neighborhood and everyone seems to know about it, as Alderman Montemayor just said, why hasn't anything been done about it? Why do we have to destroy Sheridan Park in order to do something about it? 
To those of you who say no one uses a park anyway, I say this, yes they do. More and more now that we invest 20, invested 20,000 CDBG dollars, should more people use the park? Sure they should. But the park has never been user friendly. I've heard comments today, I've heard comments before. We have not made it user friendly. There are no grills, no picnic tables, adequate lighting, adequate parking equipment, uh, park equipment. And just recently, the section, uh, we sectioned an area for playing basketball and made other necessary improvements. And yes, people started using the park. If you provide the adequate uh, facilities, people will use it. And by the way, if we destroy Sheridan Park, tear off all those $20,000 we put in there no more than two years ago, are we going to have to pay it back to the CDBG? We may. To those of you who say people can use the school district's playground or Kiwanis Park, I say this. Do people use the school district playground? Yes, they do. But I guarantee you that if that park, that if the park equipment and lighting were removed today, not very many people would anymore. That's what happened to Sheridan Park. The point is this, if we, probably equip our, if we properly equip our parks, people will enjoy them and they will use them. If people are not using Sheridan Park today, it's our fault, not theirs. And how many parents would be prepared to send their kids half a mile to Kiwanis Park so their kids could play in the park? Not very many, I assure you. It's a long walk, there's danger in crossing too many intersections, and the river, and no sidewalks, and no lighting. Next, I would say I am deeply concerned that our city historian so quickly proposes to destroy a park that is a historical monument to the city of Sheboygan and its residents. Maybe by not, not by definition, but by heart. Sheridan Park is the first, or the second, or one of the two, oldest plotted parks in the city of Sheboygan. It does have great historical value and integrity to our past, present, and more importantly, our future, and that of our children and grandchildren. And I am deeply concerned that an alderman who does not represent District 2 would go around knocking on people's doors and telling them to support the police station at Sheridan Park because it will increase their property value. To me, that is extremely inappropriate, unfair, and unsubstantiated. I live across from the police station. Nobody told me my property value and tax increase because of the police station. They did so because I put a lot of work and money in my home. That's why. It's nothing to do with the police station. Finally, I would like to end by asking the following questions. While everyone is so busy with which side is the best, has anyone thought about how we are going to pay for the police station, maintenance costs, and all other related costs? Is the city going to borrow the money? 15 or more million, I believe. And if so, how is the city going to pay for it? And what impact of the project, what is the impact of the project on the taxpayers? Why is the city in such a hurry to approve Sheridan Park? As Alderman Montemayor said, it's not going anywhere. It's ours. We own it. While the Building Use Committee may have negotiated with the county for a year, the city council, as a collective body, has not had sufficient time to study and debate the matter. A gentleman said this, this has all the earmarks of a ram it through again proposal. I will close by saying this, and this is very important to me because I, I believe in the municipal code. 74.3e, our, our municipal code states that renaming, simply renaming our, park, our parks is a serious matter and should be avoided. Why then is it so easy to eliminate it without even a provision in our code to do so? Thank, thank you. you. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. As you know, I'm also a member of the Plan Commission, and on a Plan Commission, I voted uh, in, in a positive for Sheridan Park. Uh, and also being chairman of the Building Use Committee, uh, I've made my position on that well known. Quality of life is one issue that has come up, and I believe quality of life in any community is closely related to the safety of its citizens and its visitors. Our city's police facility has been rated the worst in the state of Wisconsin. And I think we need to change that designation. By using Sheridan Park as a location for a new police station, we will have a minimum impact on park acreage in this city. With 32 parks totaling 663.66 acres, 
we have more than adequate park space and using 2.6 acres for Sheridan Park will leave 661.06 acres of parkland in the city of Sheboygan. I believe that still makes us second to Madison. By adding the 0.9 tenths of an acre on 14th and Penn to the park system, a little oasis there for people to wait for the bus and dressing that up, it'll look a lot nicer. And by adding uh, the 1.77 acres owned by the Redevelopment Authority on 13th Street just down the block, that allows us to have 662.92 acres of parkland yet. A mere 0.74 acres, three quarters of an acre less than now. I support using Sheridan Park for this project and I believe it fits well with our comprehensive plan as well. That plan clearly states the need for a new police station is critical to the city's future in all aspects and it also states that that should be centrally located. We did look at other sites centrally located. I also believe we can maintain the historical significance of Sheridan Park at the site, along with building a new police building. As many of the trees as possible will be preserved, and an appropriate area for a monument can be included. And the name Sheridan Station, I believe, can help to maintain the former public square significance. As we enter into another budget cycle, we must all be concerned about every decision we make regarding the financial concerns of this city. The fact remains, choosing Sheridan Park over the county's offer for their 3.8 acre site is, the best interest, is in the best interest of the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan. It doesn't matter if we give the county $300,250 in cash directly or if we set it aside to use to pay for their contribution. It's still our taxpayers, city taxpayers money. The $250,000 in initial building cost is only an estimate. That could even go higher by using the 23rd Street site. The parking lot at 7th and Penn. At one time, we thought it was worth $120,000. After we had it appraised, we found out it was worth $326,000. That's how the county got their six, over $600,000 property down to $300,000, because they agreed to take that off the top. Well, that lot is on a piece of real estate that will do nothing but appreciate. And if the city ever had to replace it, as Alderman Perez stated, the Transit Commission estimates replacement of that lot would cost at least $750,000. That's three quarters of a million dollars, folks, to replace that parking lot. There are businesses down there that are going to need additional parking. They are expanding. At the last Transit Commission meeting, the Commission did not advocate giving the 7th and Penn lot to the county. That's in your documents. It's a document after this 929. We can still allow the county to use that lot for free for, a nominal f for free or for a nominal fee on a year-to-year -year basis and still retain ownership should any outside interest or internal need arise. The offer still stands to use the armory lot as well. And using Sheridan Park site will not only save city taxpayers money today, but in the future as well. Because that money to build a new police station is another issue and we have to borrow that. And by saving the money up front, that lowers our borrowing costs, and it's likely those borrowing costs are gonna be somewhere between seven and eight million, not some of the other figures you've had out there. Remember, we already have $2 million set aside. In today's world, public safety and quality of life are intertwined. You cannot separate the two and have one without the other. Our city is the sum of all of its parts, its parks, its streets and its public facilities. A new police station is critical, is a critical infrastructure need, and will enhance the quality of life for everyone that lives in our city. And our visitors as well. I believe the change from Sheridan Park to Sheridan Station is in the best interest of the city of Sheboygan and an excellent and fiscally responsible <coughs> choice for our city's future. In answer to some of the other questions, uh, the council, the B Building Use Committee has been meeting on this for over three years. I've been on the council for five years, and I've been on the Building Use Committee for all that five years. We didn't meet much in the first year and a half. Those meetings are open to every member of this council. Our minutes are there. You're welcome to attend. Over that period of three years, some of you are new. I understand it's difficult to get up to speed. I think the committee members will be glad to explain to you where they're at and what's happened. Some other things were talked about, shared services. Shared services don't stop at your, at your property line. 
They expand beyond that. I have a shared services book here because I'm a member of the shared services committee. And this book is loaded full of shared services. You name it, we share it. Just about everything there is. From crime software, emergency operations, and everything. This is the shared services in Sheboygan County between the city of Sheboygan and the county of Sheboygan and includes towns, villages, and municipalities. We share services, a lot of them, and we will continue to do so. I've mentioned in the past the RFP for this project will probably include, it does actually include, we haven't had it in committee yet, but I read it in there, includes a joint communication center. That is in there. Will that happen or not? We'll find out when we get to that point. The Common Council is the one that makes the decisions. That's our job. We are the elected representatives of the people of this city. The staff does a great job, and they have differences of opinion all the time. I have a lot of respect for our park staff, public works, and the plan group, and they all know that. And it's the Common Council who has to make these types of decisions, and I think we should move this forward. Thanks. Alderman Warner, the question I talked to you earlier tonight, Alderman Perez brought up a point about borrowing. We're going to offer borrowing, but we'll still stay under a 3% 3 3 debt Yes, capacity. we would still be under a 3% debt. And that will be pennies to the budget, I, if I'm yes. correct? Yes. When we figure it out, very minimal. No matter where we build that, we will be under our debt capacity, it'll be pennies to the budget. And, and I would add, Your Honor, the state says, state statutes say you can go to 5% of your equalized value, I believe it's called, and the city has maintained and stayed under 3%, and this borrowing is figured in, and Rich has laid out the numbers, we would still stay under our 3%. So. Well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say pennies because that was a couple of years ago when we checked it. It, it may have went up since then. I forget the number. But uh, Rich would have the numbers. Uh, Rich, you have, remember what that was? It would be a few hundred thousand a year additional debt service. Debt service. And how much uh, per, do you remember what it was? I don't have the calculation on the rate. Okay. But we would be under a 3% debt capacity. Yes. So we are doing well. <laughs> Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I can agree with just about everything that was said said tonight. Um, uh, there's, <laughs> but this is a, an unusual situation. Um, you can say, well, we'll save a million dollars if we do Sheridan, but you've got to remember a lot of the figures being tossed around are, are estimates. Some are, what if this would happen and what if that would happen? A lot of it is just paper that's out there. And you don't know if we, for instance, use Sheridan Park and then want to build a new one, how much that would cost. You don't know for sure if the, the estimate on the, the slab for the 23rd Street site, if that, that is really 250000 Somebody said it could be more, it could also be less. Um, but the only thing that has not been done, as far as I, I'm concerned, and I've asked several times um, why it hasn't, um, is Kimi and Associates and um, Steubenrock have never looked at the 23rd Street site. Um, they've looked at a, a site close to there and gave an estimate on that, but that's not looking at the 23rd Street site. They looked at and evaluated and gave their recommendation on every other site, um, came up with the top five, um, but we don't have a, a statement from them except one that was in a letter that said it would make a great site. At least that's the only thing I've seen in, a, in all the documents that we had passed to us and so forth. Um, I know Alderman Peterson has, has just come up with some, some additional information and I don't think there's a member of this council that is not in favor of building a new police station. But to wait a week or two um, isn't going to um, put that on hold or anything. I will not hurt that. That's the one comment that you had made this morning on your announcement that I didn't agree with. You said tonight was the night we had to make the decision. But there are some additional information coming out, even additional information coming out of the county. Um, you had a meeting a couple weeks ago where uh, you discussed certain things that could be delayed or this could happen or, or that could happen. And um, uh, those things have to be looked at too. I, we just can't turn our backs on it and say, well, you can't do this. I think we can take a straw vote tonight to say, yes, we're going to do a police station, but we want to find out some information. I would like something from Kim and Associates, and I, I know it's going to cost more money, but um, sometimes you have to spend money to make money, and being fi finance chair, I don't want to spend any more money than what we have to, but I want to make sure we're doing the right decision. And if I just base it on the number of calls I, 
I have, it's going to be, I would, would support the 23rd Street site. Even as, as late as tonight, when I, before I left the house, I got one saying, I hope you're going to support the 23rd Street, the 23rd Street site. And um, it's very close. I had about um, 50 calls totally. And I, I would guess it was about 30 for the 23rd Street site and 20 that said, go ahead with Sharon. Sheridan, excuse me. And um, because of that, uh, I would support uh, what Bob Peterson said before, Alderman Peterson said before, because um, I think we, if we're getting a gift, even though it might appear to be a bribe or something to some people, if we're getting a gift for something, um, let's look at it. That's how we did um, our $54 million gorgeous uh, Blue Harbor Center. We had friends, friends of, of Sheboygan help with that, and a lot of other contributions were made to that that allowed us to do something like that and step forward. So um, just to let everybody know. Thank you. <coughs> Alderman Sigali. <coughs> My speech isn't going to be as eloquent as uh, Alderman Perez's or Groff or Werner's. I guess my speech is just going to be is that we need a new police station. We've waited way too long. We talked about it and I haven't even thought about running for election. So I got elected to this and I don't think I ever would have thought that in August of 2004 I would be voting on a police station. But they need it. I toured that station. If anybody in this city needs a place, they do. And they deserve it. I know some of these officers and some of us go back a little ways when I worked at the Y. And they, we keep putting this off. Um, Alderman Peterson has a very good idea of if you want to wait and see. Well, we wait, we've been waiting and seeing for how many years? And each time something else comes up that we're going to wait and see. We can't do that any longer. We have to give them a decision. And my decision would be Sheridan Park. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, appreciate the comments that have been verbalized tonight. Many of these comments have been voiced in the last many months in, in committees and uh, building use uh, and plan commission, et cetera. Uh, it's good, though, for the public to have much of this variety that perhaps they haven't had before. So I think it's very helpful, as well as helpful for us. Uh, I don't love either side. Push comes to shove, I'll vote for Sheridan Park if we had to vote tonight. I appreciate what Alderman Peterson's been doing and looking at an alternative site. It's also centrally located, that would beautify a portion of the city that needs it, that might still be a possibility, although at this point in time it looks like there might be a roadblock. But I move to table this for six weeks so we have adequate time to look at that alternative possibility and to have a committee of a whole meeting prior to uh, this meeting in six weeks so we can have full and adequate information both about Alderman Peterson's possibility and perhaps uh, with some further information from the professionals in evaluating in, in further sites. Thank you. Can I that yeah, I need a second. second. Okay, you have a second on it. Thank you all. Now you're talking about that, all right? We have a motion on the floor. We're speaking on a motion. Motion. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Honor. I. Judging from the comments tonight, I don't know how close this is going to be to, to table the situation, but perhaps uh, Alderman Manny would like to invoke Section 281 that requires only three votes to defer for two weeks. Okay, well, we have a motion before us first. Okay. I realize that. I just said he might want to amend to okay. reconsider. Alderman Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Once again, going back to that Penn Avenue site with the Ryan Oil. Plus the fact we have a gentleman that is supposedly remodeling the old Johnsonville Sausage Company down there to fix it up for a restaurant, which he was taken out of when they put South Business Drive in. He lost his restaurant. Now, are we going to take his second restaurant away from him? I should think not. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, yeah, I appreciate what Bob Peterson is doing or sorry, Alderman Peterson, but uh, we've been doing this for years. He could have done this a year ago. Talking about railroading things through, this is what we're doing. We're gonna railroad this through, get it done in six weeks, fast as we can, and then vote on it. That's railroading it through. We've been working on this for three years. Alderman Warner. 
I thank your honor. I would urge the council to vote against tabling this matter. It's been tabled for 40 years. If you talk to Alderman Wangerman, they talked about the need for a new police facility in the 1960s. We have multiple studies out there. I actually look for them at home. Some of them are, I've had for probably three years. I didn't bring them along with me, but we need a new police station. Sheridan Park is the best pick. Tabling this is nothing but delaying. It's just a delay thing, and uh, I think it's a bad idea at this time. Uh, I think it would probably kill the project. Well, let's vote on that. No other discussion. Would you call the roll on the holding for six weeks, you said? That's the motion. Um, this would be a vote to hold for six weeks. Correct. So a yes vote would be to hold. Right. Serta. No. Pardon me? Hey. Graf. Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Sigali? Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Wangaman? No. Warner? No. Bauman? No. Berg? No. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> and Ten I <eyes>, five votes. <laughs> and Bonet. No. Ten five votes. Okay, we we'll go back to the original motion. Ten eyes, five no's, right? Ten eyes, five no's. Original motion, Alderman Warner? Other way around, I'm sorry, 10 no's, 5 eyes. 10 no's, all right. And thank you, Your Honor. All right, we do have a letter from Kimmy, and the Kimmy recommended we needed the entire four acre site. They sent an aerial to Kimmy and Associates, and that was sent to the county, and the county replied that the terms were not negotiable. Every member of this council got it. We tried to get back to them on that, and they decided not to, and in the interim, we found out we could use Sheridan Park legally, and it is in your municipality. Well, this got, Two years ago, when this when the original site analysis was done, the Chamber of Commerce came to us and said, we want to stop this right here and do a study on building a, a joint facility at the county's law enforcement center. They spent $7,500 of their money to find out what our feeling was is that it wasn't feasible because of how many people are going to put there. There's no parking. There's nothing else. And, and the Chamber at that time said, we will support you in any site you pick after this, Alderman Warner. D. Olson told me that. We'll support you in any site you pick after this if we do this study. That was D. Olson telling me that. So that delayed this project long enough that we had a look at the county site. And we did that because they, we wanted the road to the south of their building to help enhance the size of the Imperial Motel site. And then they said, well, look at the other side. So we started to, well, that took a year to get through. So, you know, we've been talking about this for a long, long time. I think, you know, we have all been listening to the radio, reading the paper, and talking to people throughout the community regarding the location of a new police station. We've been given information, had a committee of the whole presentation that was televised, I might add, and we've discussed this issue on the floor of the council tonight as well as at other times. I believe it is now time to act. Our former president of these United States Ronald Reagan perhaps said it best in 1990. A leader, once convinced that a particular course of action is the right one, must have the determination to stick with it and be undaunted when the going gets rough. Today is the time for us, this common council, to lead. We must do what no council before us has had the courage or conviction to do, locate and build a new police station. The choice we make today will address the first step, location. The second and final step will be another challenge we will have to meet. And I'm sure that with hard work and analysis, we will meet that challenge as well. We have done the studies. We have debated the issues. Everyone has had an opportunity to weigh in with their opinion. Now is the time to take the next step, a step that all of those before us have failed at. Selection of a new home for the City of Sheboygan Police Department. Your Honor, I call the question. Okay. Take the roll, please. Oh, excuse me. Question. Alderman Matzmeyer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. When we, if we vote uh, aye, yes. that means yes for Sheridan, Sheridan Park. Park. Yes. No means, means no. no for Sheridan Park, but it doesn't automatically mean yes for 23rd. Right. We're just voting on Sheridan Park right now. Right. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Would you call the roll, please? 
Graf. No. Manny. Yes. Montemayor. No. Perez. No. Peterson. No. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. <laughs> okay. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. And Graf. No. no, you don't get two votes. Sorry, you're already in there. Sorry. <laughs> no, not good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. yeah. Eleven eyes, four no's. Motion carried. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. Okay, we move forward. 930 can be filed. That's by Sheboygan Transit recommending filing documents referring to the city owned parking lot. Uh, Sheboygan yeah. Transit? Graf and Berg, or Bauman just did it. Graf, Alderman Bauman? Yeah, and I'd move that the uh, communication for Sheboygan Transit Committee be filed. Yes. <laughs> Moved and seconded that communication from Sheboygan Transit Commission recommend filing the document. Under discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 931 through 941 to be referred. Alderman Warner on our referrals. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I was reading over document 936 from Glenn Killing, and it brings up several issues, and I was just wondering if perhaps this might get referred to the Shared Services Committee and possibly Strategic Fiscal Plan also. Also. Along with building use, just as something for discussion. Which services. one, Mike? Mike, nine thirty six. Document number nine thirty six from Glenn Killing. Nine thirty six. And who do you want that to go to? Shared, Shared services, services and uh, strategic fiscal plan. Okay. Alderman Perez. Withdrawal, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. 942 by Alderman Groff, amending resolution 1301 by Alderman Groff, authorizing entering into contract for administrating the city's cash management program so as to change the list of authorized signatures. Alderman Groff. Yeah, and I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Move to second the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Redflesh. I move to amend the document uh, removing Gerald R. Vandy Creek from the water utility signature list. We have a motion and a second before us. Who okay. seconded? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, amendment, okay. Um, under discussion, Your Honor, this ties into uh, what we previously discussed earlier. That the gentleman no longer actually lives within the city of Sheboygan. Uh, the resolution allowing him to be on the committee or not has not been voted on yet. I'd be more comfortable if he is allowed to have an exception in two weeks meeting to be added back to the list, but for at least the moment in time to be removed. Alderman Warner. Hey, Your Honor, the gentleman does still live in the city. He hasn't moved out of the right. city yet, so he's perfectly legal to put him in here. I think we should leave him on and address that issue when that resolution comes back. If he does move out of the city, he will at least put in a letter saying he's moved out of the city. Withdrawn. Council's order. You withdrawing? Withdrawn. Withdraw to second? Sure. Okay. Okay. We have a motion before us in a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 943 by Alderman Warner authorizing the Department of Planning and Development to partner with the County of Sheboygan as applicant for the State of Wisconsin Department of Administration FY 2005 Comprehensive Planning Grant Fund. Alderman Warner. I thank Your Honor. I, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, perhaps the Planning Department would like to explain this, but I would simply call this another uh, incident of shared services and uh, it's obvious that if you're working with the county and applying for a grant, you're working with the county. Thanks. Correct. Uh, there is no one here, I don't believe, from the plan department tonight. So. Oh, oh, Steve. Steve. Steve, do you want to explain it? This is 
just an uh, opportunity, Mayor Council, um, just an opportunity to work again with the county. The county is doing some comprehensive planning with adjoining uh, municipalities. It's an opportunity for us to take a look at trying to implement some of the uh, goals of uh, the 2001 plan that were uh, provided the last time we looked at it. So this was uh, received block, uh, block grant approval, and it was uh, um, recommended by the Citizens Advisory Committee. Thank you. <clears throat> Would you call the roll, please? Manny. Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Graf? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried 944 by Alder McGraw, authorizing and retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of Auto Owners Insurance Company versus the City of Sheboygan and uh, authorizing payment of said services. Alderman McGraw. Yeah, and I believe I need suspension. So I will. Is there any objections to suspension? Any objections? Proceed. Then I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Okay. Move to second the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wankaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 945 by Alderman Van Akron, Wankaman, Perez, Peterson, and Montemayor granting a leave of absence to Linda Long until May 1st, 2005, from her position as election clerk during her tenure as deputy city clerk. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and seconded, resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Berg, Aye. Bonet, no. Serta, Aye. Graf, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor. Aye. 14 ayes, one no. Motion carried. 946 by Alderman Bauman, Berg, Bonet, Serta, Graf, Manny, Montemayor, Perez, Peterson, Reinflesch, Sigali, Stefan, Van Akron, and Vanderweel, Wangaman, and Warner, affirming the protection of citizens, civil rights, and civil liberties. Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. I move that this resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and second, the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Peterson. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Manny. Montemayor? Aye. And Perez? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 947 and 48 will lie over. 949 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operator's license 5788 based on her failure to cooperate with the committee and her failure to report all convictions on her application. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Mayor Chairman. I make motion to accept and adopt the report of the committee. Moved in second to accept and adopt report of committee under discussion. Uh, yes, Mr. Honor, I'd like to ask if she, she's present. Is the, uh, I'm sorry, let's see. Is Brandy Whitaker present? Is Brandy Whitaker present? Mr. Chairman, Brandy Whitaker is not present. Okay. Okay. There's no other discussion. You call the roll, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wankaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? I always hesitate because you say my name so beautifully. Oh. <laughs> so correct, thank you. I'm trying. <laughs> Perez? Aye. Ann Peterson? Aye. 15 eyes. Motion carried. <laughs> 950, Alderman Groff. 
Your Honor, that document as well as 951 and 952, which are um, a total of three documents from strategic fiscal planning regarding the 2005 budget, I would move that they lie over for until uh, our next meeting. Is there any discussion? All in favor lying over? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 953 will lie over. 954 to be referred. 836, resolution by Alderman Groff, Stefan, Berg, Manny, and Montemayor, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2004 budget. Alderman Groff. And I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and second, a resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, Sue? Sagali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. And Rinfleisch. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 847, general ordinance by Alderman Warner, Serta, Renflesh, and Wangaman, amending the code so as to reduce the licensing fee for coin operated washers and dryers. Alderman Warner. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. I would move the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Move the second ordinance be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, if the council remembers approximately a year ago, this ordinance was supposed to go into effect. It's where we negotiated. We didn't negotiate, but we, we sat down with uh, some real concerns that the laundromat operators had in the city because uh, they had inadvertently, or well, actually not inadvertently, but they had been put in with uh, the other coin-operated timers issue, which is just below them on here, and would have been charged $10 per dryer. Uh, to have their timers fixed, and if you have 30 dryers and 30 washers, that could easily come to $600, and the idea was is that was too exorbitant for what the actual cost of the city was to check the timers. And uh, we had several meetings with them and reduced that to $2, and it just took that long to get this ordinance drawn up and brought back to council for a change. So, so that $2 covers our cost? The $2, the $2 is what the cost is going to be. Prior to that, it was 10 per right. washer and dryer. and. Uh, that was exorbitant. Okay. Obviously, the cost would have been passed on to the user otherwise. And yeah, but uh, in, in laundromats, you're talking people putting quarters and dimes and nickels in these machines, and typically people that use them can't afford to be paying right. uh, such a high increase. And it's actually, a built, from a building inspection point of view, they were getting enough revenue from this for the time they spent on the site and still allowing some extra beyond what their actual cost was to be there and to maintain their equipment. Okay. So they, these people still actually will be paying uh, an annual fee plus a maintenance, a maintenance fee of uh, $20 per year in addition to that. So the idea was to try to keep it around $100 for, for each one of them for the inspection of the premises on a yearly basis and their license. And, okay, uh, otherwise it could skyrocket to $600 and that was the committee's decision. Good. Alderman. Bowman? Thank you, Your Honor. Just uh, for clarification purposes, the coin operated laundry washers and dryers, two dollars, that's per machine because it really does not state that in here. Same thing for the vacuums, the car wash vacuums, things like that, correct? Okay, thank you. Uh, if there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg, Aye. Bonet, Aye. Serta, Aye. Graf, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Perez, Aye. Peterson, Rinfleisch, Sagali. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. Steve, other matters? <clears throat> 955 is a communication from Gina Steinhardt, 1311 Maryland Avenue, in support of building the new police station at Sheridan Park. And that will go to building use. 956, a communication from Chris and Chris Hansen et al. regarding an issue that has risen in the alleyway between the 1600 block of Salmon Avenue and Sibley Court as a business has installed concrete barriers to stop all access through the alleyway. And that will go to Public Protection and Safety and Public Works. 
957 is a communication from Charter Communications regarding their additions to the digital service and their changing prices on their promotional packages as of September 1, 2004 for a small segment of their customers. And that will go to finance. We have a motion and a second before us. No other discussion? Oh. <laughs> Alderman Sagali. I'm sorry. Mr. Mayor, do we not need to clarify concerning uh, the times for Lake Fest and Broad Days that people were thinking that serving beer was going to be extended instead of 1030? There was an agenda. There was an agenda. Okay. We'll clear, it up. we'll clear it up. But she will clear it. We'll, cl we'll, we'll, clear it up we'll talk to public works tomorrow. I'm sorry then. Okay. Thank you. Is there another discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye.